All right, we're back. Actually, welcome. How about that? We're not back yet. Uh, it's MAPD 724. That's iOS Advanced Programming. Um, and here at Centennial, we are um, in the winter 20, 2018 semester. We're week one, uh, part one of our broadcasts. I forgot to put that in there. But uh, it's intro to the course. And I want to talk about what we're doing. We're going to start with drawing. Um, so I want to talk about some of the course stuff we're going to be doing. I'm also at the break, like I mentioned, I'm going to give you your first assignment. So we'll take a sh short break and then I'll give you your details for, the, for assignment number one. So this will be a couple of weeks I'll give you for the assignment because it's just getting back fresh. But I want to start you with something to work on uh, right away to get you guys going. Right. It's going to be a different um, approach than we take, did last semester because last semester we had more of a relaxed approach to certain things. And also because of the interruption we had. Uh, some of the things we couldn't do that I wanted to do. So we're going to cover some of those things this semester too. So let us begin with the book. Okay, so there's a new book that I want you guys, I recommend that you get. It's called OS 11, uh, 8th edition. It's written in 2017. It's by this guy, Matt Newberg. Um, I'm not going to lie, it's not easy. It's good reference. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how it's a nice reference, but it's not easy reading. Okay. It's a programmer's book. Okay. It's a book about programming. I'm going to do a lot of details about UI views. And one of the first things we're going to do is um, programmatic views, right? So, how to do a programmatic view as opposed to drag and drop. So, instead of dragging and dropping your stuff, everything through code right um which is a little different than what we've done before and why are we taking this approach because you need to sometimes uh generate your user interface as opposed to um your interface that is generated for you and we're talking about we're going to talk about uh graphic context and stuff like that today so some of the topics i want to talk about this this semester are a deep dive on views uh, including things like graphics, animation, how to do special touches, and Sprite Kit, which we're going to cover in this first uh, part. We're also going to hit the iPad interface, how to make things for iPad, which we didn't have a chance to cover last semester. Uh, specifically, web views, how to do proper web views. Web views are really useful because um, you might have an application that wants to have access to a web page that's specially designed. Um, you know, or access the web in a certain way that's specially made for the app, right? And so that you're not limited to um, a static application. You can use web views to give you more of a dynamic feel. Then there's different frameworks we're going to touch. We're not going to be able to go into a lot of detail on all of them because there's lots and lots of frameworks. Like, for example, audio framework, video framework. There's two different frameworks there. Um, music and photo libraries. Uh, contacts, notifications, calendars, all that stuff is things we didn't have a chance to talk, uh, talk to last uh, semester, as well as the maps framework and sensors and others, home kit, Siri kit, you know, watch kit, and so on. There's lots of stuff. If we can handle watch kit, we will. Um, I'm also going to talk more about test driven development. We're not going to let that go, as well as GitHub and stuff like that. You'll need it for your project. I won't be giving you any projects or any big any big assignments, not really. Um, you can still work with your partners, the same partners you had last semester, to do things in larger groups. I'm okay with that because there's going to be enough workload. There should be enough workload from your main project, your capstone project, which will be given tomorrow, um, to keep you going. So, you know, again, new book. Um, Definitely more of an advanced, you know, uh, way of looking at things. Um, the book is available through Amazon, and if I was to look it up, so if I went to kind of did an IB, ISBN search, I would recommend it. Let's go to Amazon. Sometimes you put the IBN, the ISBN, and so it's pretty expensive. It says eighty six twenty nine in Amazon, but you can probably get it for cheaper. Now, the great thing about this book is it's not the first edition, right? This is the eighth edition. 
Uh, and that's why I recommend it. Matt Newberg is an expert, I would say, on the stuff that we're, we're going to be covering. And, um, you know, this is, you know, the, the book that we had um, in, in the last iteration for the advanced topics was, was for iOS 10, same book. He covered most of the same topics, so this is just an update from last uh, um, last year's book that we were using. Okay, so that's the new book. You can probably also find it with the Toronto Public Library. If you actually look, there's a lot of books you can find and download and read online, and um, so it's not uh, you know using Safari books online. Safari books online is a great resource from the Toronto Public Library. So if I go there, if I go Toronto Public Library. And let me just uh, space it out properly, Tom. And if I say Safari Books, Books Online, I can spell properly. And you, you can see that here's the Toronto Public Library. If I can search for Safari Books Online and do a search for most books. So for example, if I wanted to uh, grab this book, so I said Programming iOS 11, I was going to search for it. Maybe there, may not. And if it's not there, they usually get it fairly quickly, right? Um, this is I. This is not the book. This is another book that Matt came up with. Uh, this is with Swift, more Swift and Cocoa Basics. That's not the book. Well, you can see that there are a lot of uh, of books that uh, are available as long as you have a Toronto Public Library card. Or if you have a if you're a Centennial College student, you also have access to Safari Books Online through the bookstore. All right, so it's not here yet, but it will be. I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty much sure that you can get it if you actually look at these links. You can actually download or look at books that are available here. Um, and there's some other books here like Mastering iOS 11 Programming uh, with Swift 4 and Xcode 9. Again, um, this is more of a cookbook type of thing than the others. But if you wanted to access this also, you can just log into your Toronto Public Library cards. This is my library card. Probably shouldn't be showing you that, but anyway. And then if you look at it, you can see that, I'm just not, I can't share too much of it with you because we're, we're actually recording. But you can see that if I was to go here, you can see that the, the table of contents, what the book covers. Uh, this is the other, another book you can look at as well, for which is a pretty good reference. But it's more it's a little different than what uh, the stuff that he covers, Matt Newberg covers in his book, right? So um, still they do cover things like programmatic views uh, and it seems in here as well as other things. So take a look at Safari Books. If this book's not available there soon, I'd be very uh, surprised, okay? Instead of spending your $86, it's gonna be out uh, fairly soon. In the meantime, I will be covering most of the topics in the book and adding some other stuff. Uh, from uh, some of the previous stuff we had uh, before. So that's the book, and that's more or less what I'll be covering uh, in this semester. Uh, like I said earlier, for people who weren't here, I'm gonna give you your first assignment today. Uh, it'll be due in a couple weeks. Yeah, I know, I gotta get you guys going, right? I know people are like, what the heck, today? First day, welcome back, how about that, right? Uh, but if we don't do it, uh, we won't have time You'll start getting all the other all the other assignments, and this way we'll stagger. Mine will be one of the first ones you do, and it won't be so bad. I will allow groups of people to do it together again, like last time, so it won't be so. Hopefully, it won't be so painful. Um, but I want you guys to go into uh, you know, uh, you know, this assignment that I'm going to give you. Any questions around the basic topics we're going to cover this semester? Because this is kind of what's in the outline as well. All right, so again, um, so starting off today, we're going to talk a little bit about more about image views in a more of a detailed way of talking about it and graphics. Okay, now this PowerPoint, as you can see, is 98 pages long, right? I will be putting it up on uh, eCentennial uh, very shortly. And so you can have access to it for now. It's not up there, but I will put it up. Actually, you know what? While we're talking, I might as well convert it to... Uh, PDF for you guys so you guys can look at it. So we'll just do that now. 
<clears throat> any uh, any questions around anything around this uh, semester? The semester is different. Uh, it's considerably different than you you've had in other semesters because, well, one the courses are uh, a little bit more challenging. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, so that's one. Oh, this is nice. They chopped off my name. Um, so the courses are more challenging. Number one, and the second thing is that the type of courses you're getting are different. So let's go over it. So Monday, again, you were saying that you have me. Tomorrow, you have your capstone. Wednesday is what? Andrew with, with, with Victor, right? Thursday, you have with Shemek. And Friday, you have Charles. And Charles is going to cover emerging technologies, and you're going to learn about IoT, Internet of Things, which is awesome, a very hot topic. Uh, it's one of the number one topics to, to learn about in um, in 2018 still. I mean, it's been hot for a few years now. It's not like the first year it's ever happened, but um, I think it's a great course to complement what we're doing here in um, with mobile. All right, let's let us let me put this up on uh, thing for you. So I'm going to go to East Centennial, and I'll drop this uh, um, this stuff up there so you guys can have it. Because otherwise, I'm going to talk and then you're going to get distracted because there's so much to, to go over today. All right, so advanced iOS. We'll go to content and we'll go week one. All right, so. All right, there you go. You guys should have access to it now. Okay, so let's talk about drawing a little bit. So this, this section, I'm gonna be talking concepts. Um, we'll talk some high level concepts. We'll get into some more details and then I'll get you actually to do something in the second half, right? I got 98 pages, lots of material to cover. We have four hours together. And then in the break, like I said, I'll post on Dropbox your assignment. And then we'll go over it in the second half. All right, so we've been talking about images. You guys know about images. And one thing to note about images, it takes, when you're building, in, um, when you're dragging and dropping an image or using an image in your iOS applications, all kinds of different images. So TIFF, JPEG, and, and uh, GIF, and so on. But for iOS, one thing to note and to reiterate from what we talked about, PNG files or ping files are preferred. Okay, so iOS loves ping. So if you can use them, if you can choose a format ever for your applications, please use those. Why not the other ones? Well, what ends up happening is they get converted to a ping file anyway, right? So you don't want that to happen. Also, PNG files in general have, um, they use transparency very well, right? They have uh, different alpha layers. Right, and some other formats have alpha layers as well, but there's no guarantee it's gonna work exactly as you would expect. So first things first, again, just a, and it's a bit, of, bit of a review when it comes to image views, use ping files, okay? The other thing to notice is that there's two places that you can get your, um, uh, your image files. One, of, one place is the asset catalog, right, and that's, where you have an image set, we did that kind of last time, right? We have an image set, you drag and drop it into XC assets, right? And inside your asset catalog, you can have multiple image sets depending on what device or orientation you're hitting for your app, right? The other option is, it says top of app bundle. And if you actually look at the app bundle, we're not gonna go do it now, but you can actually target an area where you can actually add images not in the XC assets, but another location, okay? Again, one thing to note is that a PNG uh, extension is always assumed with this top level app bundle stuff. Okay, we'll talk about that later. So in the asset catalog, when you do things programmatically, now up until now, it's always been, oh yeah, we're gonna use Xcode, we're gonna drag and drop user interface items, and we're gonna use them, we're gonna program them. But starting today, 
we're going to not program them. We're not going to drag and drop them. We're going to try and program as much as we can from scratch. Okay. So in other words, you're going to make custom interface items, right? And that's difficult, but it required. Think about, I don't know, a user control that doesn't exist. Or you want to draw something on um, with iOS that you know you can't do by dragging and dropping an item, or you know you want to make something come alive, but you want to do it with code, um, and you need to go into more detail as we move forward. It's going to be more code and less drag and drop. Okay, and this whole first section is all around how to code by hand. Now, for people who are afraid, you know, like if you're not a great coder and you're like, you know, Tom, I, you know, back in my home country at InTouch you know, a computer until I was like, you know, 25, right? And I never touched that. We did a lot of work. We did my, I did my BA, but I never had access to a computer. There's some people who just don't have access and that's fine. But um, here, you know, we have to kind of, to get more detailed and we're going we're gonna to get more in advance. Some of the, the framework we're going we're gonna to be touching this semester, you need to get your hands dirty more with code. So if you're not good with code and last semester you had your friends help you a lot, Right? Please get your hands dirty this semester because it's gonna you're gonna need to do it if you want to get good with iOS. Okay, so if you look at the asset catalog and you want to bring an item that's into the asset catalog, catalog you're gonna use this init function, init named. So you're gonna initialize a. Um, this is the way we're gonna start doing it uh, from the asset catalog. You use built-in init function. And what you want to try and do as much as possible, you can have a lot of different assets. One of the things you want to try and do is not use uh, image sets with the same name. And you can do that. You can have a bunch of image sets with the same name. That's okay uh, from a drag and drop perspective. But when you do things programmatically, you don't know which image set you're accessing. And that might become a problem. So don't try and avoid naming things the same. The difference with the asset catalog and the app bundle is you have a couple of uh, ways of doing things, right? We're going to talk about the app bundle a little later as we get moving into our into our day. Also, from an image file perspective, um, you can also specify in the attributes inspector, we talked about this before, the width and the height class. One thing we didn't do, I'm just going to open up a little project here. Uh, as I get going, because it's easy for me to talk, but hard for you to understand what I'm talking about unless you see it. So I'm just going to pull up a um, just Xcode here. And one thing I didn't mention in my little intro is there's going to be more Swift, right? Because last semester I talked about we just like did just in time Swift. Um, we we're learning just what you needed to learn, and that's it. There's going to be more Swift this semester. Um, don't let it scare you away. It's not easy, as we know but it's something that's required for us to get good at programming iOS applications. Okay, so I wanna make a new uh, kind of Xcode project here. I'm gonna make a single view application. Uh, by the way, notice that there are some other things we haven't touched. We will probably touch some of these other ones as well this semester. One of the ones for sure we're gonna be touching is this game one, this one, right? Because we're gonna make some games, right? But this one, this single view app, we're gonna go next. And just to continue with this, um, I'm going to put in uh, MAPD 724 and then W 2018. Um, we'll say lesson one. Okay, so uh, this is where it is. We're using Swift. We're not using core data. That was what we did almost a lot in the last um, kind of session. And we're going to click next. We're going to save it in the same place we always save it and click create. And we're going to also use a Git. Uh, we're going to kind of create a source or um, repo locally, and we're going to put it up on the web. OK, so don't worry about this stuff. We have a couple of uh, no signing certificate for iOS development found. Yay. OK, we'll fix that later. But one thing to note is that when I have in my main storyboard, right? So if I click on main storyboard, and if I have an image view, so if I look here in the uh, library here, and if I talk image view, here's my image view, and I drag and drop it somewhere on my screen, any image view, um, you get some stuff in the inspector. Don't worry about doing this. Just watch. I don't need you to actually follow along. I'm going to put it up on the web anyway. So if you notice in the inspector, we have the name of the image. Um, you know, 
And there's two options here. You have one, you can have two images for the same image view. Right now, we didn't talk about this in detail last time because no time. Right now, more time. So we're going to be talking about this more. So think about this. Even if we, whether we program it or whether we drag and drop it like I did in the inspector, notice that there is an image and a highlighted, those two properties, those two attributes. So that means for each image, I can have two images. That's the first thing to note, okay? Also, there's different other attributes. For example, my content mode, which we're going to be talking about in a second. The default one is scale to fill. There's a lot of other ones. And you should experiment with some of these things to try and figure out what they do, okay? Not only is this uh, the case as well, but on the bottom right now, if you notice, we have... Um, the, uh, we can embed a stack. That's one thing we haven't talked about uh, until now, a stack view. We can add new constraints. We can also remove auto uh, or resolve auto layout issues if you want to do that. And we can also create uh, different kinds of views based on um, or different kinds of scenarios based on different views. Right now, if you notice, we're targeting our iPhone 8, right? Because that's the default. We said 8 plus up at the top. I can also change this. And notice on the bottom here where it says there is WC and HR. What does that mean? Anyone know what that mean? Some of you may have looked into this when we talked about this. So what does C and R stands for? First of all. So one is compact, right? And the other one is regular, right? And there's W and H. W means width and H is height. So in this particular case, the default mode is compact width because when you have an iPhone in, or in um, portrait orientation, it's compact width. And then you have regular height because even if you have an iPhone or an iPad, that's a pretty good height you know, for the regular iPad, right? So now you can do something called vary for traits. There's a little button down here on the bottom, right? And that means like what if... I mean, I could put some constraints in here. Let's say I want to put some constraints. I want to do auto layout. So I want to say, you know, add missing constraints. This is, but remember, this is for the selected view. This is for all views. Let's just do for the selected view. So I add missing constraints. There we go. So it adds some constraints for us. And then if I click vary for traits, this little button we never clicked last semester, right? Then what it does is, well, what kind of, what, what do you want to vary for? Width, right? Well, that means if I want to change my orientation for, you know, from a um, portrait to a landscape, right? What am I doing? I'm saying that the port, the, the orientation is going to be width, regular, height, compressed, right? So I want a compressed height and width that's regular. So I'm actually doing both width and height, right? Notice that I'm doing both width and height. And when I click this, you see that what's happening down here is it tells me, well, which one do you want, right? And I can start thinking about, you know, what it's going to look like. I can look at for different iPads, different kinds of things, the iPad Pro. And you can see also that there is iPhone 8 Plus for a full screen, right? There's portrait. And I can even go, if I want to, I'm going to do this in a second. All right. So that's the first thing to note. And notice on the right, once we've clicked this button, very for traits, this whole area down here changes to blue, right? That means we got some variations happening. And on the right, you can see that inside uh, the inspector, right, we have a view. Here's the width and a height, right, for our position for our object, okay? And now we're going to be able to um, start varying the view for different traits, Okay, so our default orientation is um, portrait, but if you want to go to landscape, and that's perfectly fine, we're going to change it. I want to make sure that the trait is going to be modified. So right now, let's say in this view, right, we can see that I'm still in a portrait view, and I want to make sure that this view is modified, right? So I'm going to kind of move this over so you can see it more. I want to mod modify these view so I can go more on a 
landscape perspective. So let's change this. So let's say I want to make it work on an iPad Pro with a split view, or I want to make it uh, an iPad Pro 9.7 with a landscape, let's say. So I want to kind of put that in there. So there's my iPad Pro with a landscape, a different kind of orientation, a landscape view. And notice that this view is, if I kind of scroll down, you can see that this is not really showing me what I want. OK? So I, I want to be able to vary this so that this is wider. So I'm going to make, it, make sure it's like different on a different device. So I'm going to kind of change this up. I can do my auto result re kind of, uh, um, I can kind of reset suggested constraints for this particular view, right? And it's different than the other views. Now I click both height and width, okay? If I undo, I'm just going to undo those changes for a second. And if I go back to, you know, vary for traits, like if I click on, I don't want to vary for traits anymore. Notice that there's two orientations, uh, whichever one I want, landscape or portrait, depending on what I want. I haven't clicked very for traits, and I can just drag and just drag and drop this again for a second. So remember what I could do also do is in my very for traits, I can add in my resets to suggested constraints and then change my orientation. Notice that when I do that, it's not exactly the same. Right? And if I change to reset suggested constraints and, and shift back, let's do this again. I say I want it when I'm when I'm this way. I want my my image to be really big, like I'm I don't know, I'm looking at a picture viewer app, let's say, right? And when I'm in, uh, you know, kind of a landscape mode, I want to see my image really really big, right? Let's just set to to kind of uh, suggest constraints here, and then I'm going to go back to uh, orient this orientation. But for this one, somehow, I don't want it to be this big. I only want it to be this big. That's what my what I really want to do. So for this size, I only want to do this. But notice that. I haven't clicked on vary for traits, so it doesn't understand what I'm trying to do. Okay, so if we start with this, just not to to uh, uh, to confuse you, click vary for traits, and I want to click on width only. Right here's my width, and right now it says compact width uh, devices. There's varying for 20 compact width devices, not height, just width. So now again, I can look at these iPhone uh, portrait, iPhone 8, uh, iPhone 8, and so on. And you can also see that there's also landscape mode, right? So notice here's my iPhone 8 landscape, full screen. So for iPhone 8, I want to make it so that my constraints, like I said, are full screen, like this, right? Now this is doing a uh, drag and dropping and using this thing. So reset suggested constraints. And then I'm going to click done varying. Done varying. And if I go back to this, then I should see... Oh, this isn't right. I should see it's only going to stay here. And when I click on the other orientation, it should stretch. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. It remembers, though, it should remember all the, the width and height of what this is doing. Well, we can do the same thing programmatically. All right. So when I go back to the, to the example that I was giving you, compact height and or compressed height and regular width, you can also have any height. You can change the the uh, orientation type as well. If I go back to this, notice that it says this width and height, and this is done by the interface. But you can also change it. So if I go back to uh, this thing here, so I want to say I'm going to go back to here. I want to put this over here, and I'm trying I'm trying to do it by just dragging and dropping. Let's just reset the suggested constraints, and let's vary for traits again. And I want to go width. Okay, just one more time. So it didn't work. And I want to check out the iPhone portrait mode or landscape mode, iPhone 8. Okay, there's my landscape. This is how it looks, right? Notice that they're different. They look different over here, The even though it says it's red. But on the right, you have a bunch of options, right? So if you look at some of these things that we have here, this is the identity. This is the file inspector. This is quick help. This is the identity inspector. And the identity inspector gives us a couple of things. The document itself the accessibility, the image, uh, if I'm able to interact with it and so on. These are things we didn't really cover last time, as well as the image view. And notice that I can also change the image. So if I click this, it says uh, introduce variation based on width, compact. If I change from my image width, which is compact, if I go to regular width, right, I can introduce a variation based on regular width and any height. 
and I can click on add variation, right? So I can have two different images, one image that's for, you know, a regular one. Oh, and I love when my Xcode crashes. It's amazing. Don't you love that? Right? Uh, yeah, it crashed. Uh, but you can do that if you vary for width. Sorry about that. That just happens sometimes. Don't panic. Oh, wait. It even opened back to where I was. Uh, yeah, so like I said, I can vary for a regular width. And uh, instead of compact height, I want to vary for any height. I can add the variation. You can see that there is another image slot that I can put in. I can have two images, one for uh, one type of situation and one for when it crashes like that, right? It's okay. It's probably my memory usage because I'm trying to do all this stuff at the same time. Anyways, you get the picture. I'm not going to do that again. Um, and the same thing goes with the other ones. You can click anywhere you see a plus. You can switch out the image, right? Um, content mode. You can also notice that the content mode right now is scale to fill, right? Scale to fill. And there's also aspect fit and a bunch of other ones. But notice these little pluses, right? Like the background. I can make a change, a variation based on, hey, if I'm wide, maybe I want to make my background a different color, right? So for when I'm instead of compact, when I'm regular width, it's going to crash on me again. And any height, let's make it regular height. Regular height, I want to change the variation. Let's try that again. I've said regular width and um, regular height. Regular width, regular height. I want to add a variation. And I want to change the background color to something else. right? So for this situation, and I can make as many of these variations as I want, depending on the orientation of my device. And really what we're talking about is something called size class, right? So I can I can change my orientation and the way things look according to the size class. That's what it was called in previous versions of Interface Builder. Now it's just this, you know, um, width and height. Notice that they're both compact in this case. So right now you can see the orientation is compact width and compact height, right? This is for regular width and regular height. Let's make another one. So I'll make another variation for compact width and compact height, right? So we'll add another variation. There we go. So we have three of them, one for the, for the default, and let's make this red, right? You can see that the image changed to red, right? Because it's compact width and compact height, right, that I'm doing, right? And we can keep on doing this when we vary for traits so that we have different situations based on uh, the orientation, as well as the size of our screen, iPad versus iPhone. So you can do that here in Interface Builder, and you can also do it with code. And that's what this thing is all about. That's what, when, it, when it says, when in the attributes in, uh, inspector using width class and height class, these size classes can be used to create an orientation or a design of your choice. I'll go more into that later on. All right, so again, um, you've got your asset catalog. This is where you, you keep everything, and you have this idea of a trait collection, right? And if the, you, you can actually listen for if the trait collection changed. Okay, is that what does that mean? If the width and height changed, you can vary your image. You can swap out your image programmatically with this event. Trait collection did change, right? If the trait collection did change, you can change the image to make whatever you want. Okay. Here's some example code um, where you have, I'm just gonna bring this a little closer so we'll look at this thing, okay? So here's a custom view. And we have this image, which is of type UI image view, right? That's what it is, UI image, right? And then we're gonna override the built-in traits collection did change event handler or event listener so that when it happens, this UI trait collection, which is based on the image view, whatever that is, um, it's, we're going to, let's, as an example, um, we can call a method called set needs display. We don't have that here. That does something that causes the draw to be called. So every time it changes the, the trait collections changes, we can redraw the display, re-render the images, right? Because just because you change your image doesn't mean it's going to redraw the image or re-change after, after it resets everything. It's not going to set things up again. You've got to tell it to do that. Okay. So here's the example of where we override the draw call. 
the draw call basically draws the image that we want. Here, this image is called I am. I would never call it that, but this is what it is in the book. I am is image view. That's the I, UI image. That's what it is, image. So the image is self.image, which is this. So it gets a reference to this. It creates a, uh, a copy of it here. And basically what it says is if this I, I am, right, if this is true, if it exists, if the image does exist, if we can get a reference, then, hey, check out the asset. Take a look at the asset in the image asset set, right? And set the image, right, of this particular asset, right? Vary it with the trait collection. Take the image from the trait collection that you're going to have in the assets, different in the XC assets, and sub it in there. Okay, that's really what it is. It looks... Not intuitive when you look at this for the first time. You're looking at that, I don't understand what this does, right? But if you think about what it is, what, what's happening is I'm going to draw, I'm going to redraw the image based on the asset that I need when I reset the uh, the way the, the image is, you know, displayed based on my size class. So whatever my, my from my iPhone or iPad, I switched my orientations, and now I have a different size class. A good example of that is if I want to display my image on multiple devices. So I have an iPhone, I have a watch, right? I talked about that last semester. It's crazy. Watches are crazy, right? Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, seriously. Sometimes I want to throw it out the window. Um, only because it constantly reminds me of things, right? Like, Tom, you know, you have, you have to stand up. Tom, you have to breathe. I would never be able to breathe or stand up if it wasn't for my watch, right? Anyways, um, so... Yeah, so, and you don't know what the display is going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow, like, maybe they're going to come up with some other display, you know, glasses or something, right? So we have to get used to the scenario where there is no user interface. The user interface is not going to be a certain size. There's no standard size anymore. It's whatever the new new device that they're going to come up with this year is. When they're going to come up with the iPhone X2 this year, whatever they're going to, whatever that's going to be, whether it's an iPhone XS or an iPhone nine or an iphone 8s whatever they come out with the, the screen size and the bevel might be slightly different right you don't know and if that happens what are you going to do you're going to redo your app you can't right so we have to be able both with image uh with the uh, interface builder as well programmatically be able to handle those things so i'm just introducing this concept right now all right um so again, you know, you have a lot of these UI images. A lot of the stuff we, we have is, you know, there's two types. We talked about two types of images we can have. We talked about that piece where you have the highlighted image and the regular image. Um, because images are PNGs, right, only the, that's what we prefer, only the visible part of the image, not the alpha layer, right? The, there's, there's, remember, there's, there's four channels that we have in all png images right we have the r channel the g channel red green blue and alpha right the only thing it's going to do the alpha channel is basically a mask that says hey anything in this alpha channel that's not inside the red green or blue channels right if you think about what the alpha channel is it's not going to be displayed this other stuff here is going to be transparent this is where the transparency is going to happen it's almost like the alpha channel is the negative right of the image so if I have an image of a, a leaf or a hand, I have here's my hand. I have an image, and I have, you know, in this my hand, I have red, green, and blue channels to make it the color that it is. But the stuff in between my hand, that's the negative part, right? Where the alpha lives, that's the alpha channel, right? So the alpha channel kind of says, hey, you know, forget the stuff that's outside of the red, green, and blue. This stuff here, it's transparent. Okay, it's kind of a simplistic way of looking at it. But really what it is, is it's data. And if I was to take the alpha channel and reverse it, I would get a black image where my hand should be, right? If I took the alpha channel and inverted it, right? That's what it is. Alpha channel is like my, my hand is missing, right? My hand is like something's, something's missing from there. And then I, when I combine all the other channels together, I get the color that I want, right? That's how it works. Color in real life doesn't work like that. How does color in real life work? right? Is color in real life additive? Think about this, or subtractive. What is, how does it really work? 
Is it additive? Think about how it really works, right? In real life, we don't have RGB, right? We don't. We can If we try and mix R, G, and B together, we'll get some weird color, right? It won't work, right? Same thing with print. Print, we don't use RGB. We use CMYK, right? Because we need more variations, you know, to do stuff. So think about that. What we're doing is we have got three channels, and I'm, I'm basically combining or blending channels together to get my final color. And there's another channel in behind. If I don't have that alpha channel, right, then that image, if it's not a PNG image, it makes this a default color, which is usually white, right? But you can change the default color to whatever you want. But typically, there's a color back here. In between the image, there's another color, right? But the PNG says, wait, wait, wait. I don't care about this color. This color is nothing. This color is transparent, right? And it'll reverse whatever my my uh, the image is. It'll take off and it'll put there. So that's it'll make it invisible. That part is invisible. Okay, what about this? What about if there is no image in the PNG object, right? Then the image is all invisible because there's no nothing in if the r g and b channels are zero right there's nothing there i mean like literally nothing right so there isn't a white image or a black image there's just nothing there's there's no data in the r g and b images and that's how do you do that how can you turn those those objects off you have to almost like turn the channels off r g and b right because if i make them all zeros r g and b if they're all zero right what color is that black but wait a minute. Nothing there. There's either data in the in those channels or there's no data in those channels. If there's no data in the R, G, and B channels, then all you have is the alpha channel. And the alpha channel has nothing to reverse. So it's completely invisible. Everything is invisible. Transparency is a problem for graphics. Transparency is the biggest problem. When it comes to graphics, how do we really do transparency? In games specifically, trying to look through a, uh, a window in games. Now, there's no window. You can do layers, right? And you can fool the user to think that you're looking through. But transparency is actually quite difficult to do properly and takes a lot of computations from the GPU, OK? So a little bit about graphics and image and stuff like that. Um, now, they've solved it for the most part. But um, think about doing this. You want to do the. Uh, so you want to mimic an image, some kind of, I don't know, uh, window. And behind the window, there's a shadow. You have two windows, first window and second window. And there's there's some kind of light that's coming from this side. And then there's a shadow in the inside window. How the hell do you do that, right? Remember, like, you know, you have, we have to fool the graphics cards into thinking to do what they're doing. And usually it's a combination of layering a bunch of images and blending everything together to create the final effect, right? It's the same thing with phones. It doesn't matter what interface you're using. Phones, watches, glasses, contact lenses, brain, whatever we're going to do in the future, it's all going to be a bunch of blending, most likely, to get to the image we want. OK, the other thing is we talked about the default scale to fill, right? Now, I don't have an image to show you. I don't have, there's no image here in my little example, right? Let's go back to, instead of this, we're going to go to, um, you know, this orientation, notice that when I go here, it's kind of messed up because we didn't fix it yet. And it keeps crashing on me, so it won't allow me to fix it. But bear with me, right? But what if I want to put an image in here? So I'm going to, I don't know, let's find an image uh, online just just really uh, uh, quickly. I'm going to find, I don't know, some kind of, I want to find an image of a beach, right? Because, you know, it's cold, it's rainy today. Right, we want to find some beach images, something that reminds us of a beach. There's one. I'm going to pick the first one. Yay! A nice beach image, right? Nice image. I don't even know where that is, right? It's a photo. It's a stock photo of a beach somewhere in the world, right? So I'm going to uh, save the image as, I'm going to call it, uh, uh, this is, we'll call it beach. Now, this is a JPEG. This is not a PNG image. What's the difference between a JPEG and a PNG image? It's different kinds of compression, right? Remember, you're not getting a one-to-one -one, um, image. The, the quality of the image that you're getting isn't the best. What's the best image? If I was going to get the best image quality, if I took a real camera, not an iPhone camera, not an Android camera, a real camera, like a digital SLR, I was going to take an uh, you know, kind of a picture. What's the best image I should use, the image format, if I want to get the highest resolution? Anyone know? Raw. 
right? Raw, no compression, right? That means that images might be 50 megabytes, one image, one image, one picture, right? And so, of course, we, before we couldn't deal with 50 megabytes. Imagine putting that on the web, raw. It would take forever to download before. So we had to find ways of compressing the image, right, by using an algorithm to try to think about which the colors. Remember, all an image is is a bunch of pixels, digital, right? And what are pixels, right? Picture elements. That's what pictures are, pixels, right? Pixel, picture elements, right? And um, so we're trying to figure out the color. A, a pixel has what what things what what things to make up a pixel? If you think about an image, there's two things that make up a pixel really at the end of the day, right? What two things are they? What's that? Color is the first thing, right? Color and position. Where is in the, where the pixel is on the screen, and the color. That's a pixel. Really, if you think about it, a pixel is just color. That's all it is, right? If I take a bunch of colors and put them together, I can make an image, right? And that's what a JPEG image is. It's saying, hey, if I can I lerp, can I linear interpolate between these two colors, right, to compress my image so that it's not as complex and it takes less memory. I'm not going to get the exact color, right? It may not be, you know, that variation of pink or whatever or blue or turquoise, but it's going to be close. It's going to be good enough. That's what they're going to say. And usually for the web, you can't tell. You're not going to get, you know, the highest resolution image. But if you try and print the image, go to your photo, you know, thing, make a big poster of the image. Maybe you make a poster this size, this size, the size of the board, right, of a picture of the beach. You're going to see pixelation, right, because we've been, we can, you can see those square dots eventually, right? So the higher the resolution image, you want to get a raw image and uncompressed. And then you can do your Photoshop tricks on there to get something that's acceptable for the web. Still a very high high resolution image. For our phones, it's the same problem. If I have some kind of or orientation like this, like a, a portrait orientation, and I do this, all of a sudden my my image blows up, right? It becomes bigger. And if my image is a crappy image, it's going to look crappy blown up, right? Because my phone is going to try, if it's the same image, my phone is going to try and compute what the what it's going to look like big. So what is it better to do when I do this? Swap the image, change the image to a bigger image, more accurate. Same thing with web, right? If I have my, let me just finish the beach shot for a second. I'll put it on the desktop. If I, for the web, and I want to look at a very, very high quality image of, on the web, what I want to do is swap that image out right? Maybe I'm going to have different scenarios, user scenarios, where, I don't know, a user comes along with a phone and looks at my website. Now, you guys should have learned this last semester with uh, kind of adaptive design or progressive design, one of those kind of things, where if I change my orientation or my device, then I'm going to have a different option. So there's two ways. I can compute the difference. That's bad. Don't compute or use scaling or computational ways of doing your image. Just swap the image out. That's the better way to do it. So have multiple versions of the image, one that's for high resolution uh, uh, devices and one for lower resolutions or smaller device, smaller compact uh, widths and heights, right? That kind of stuff. Okay, so I got this image. It's a JPEG, but it's really, really bad, right? So I'm going to bring it into my, uh, my kind of my favorite program here, Fireworks. And... Fireworks, again, is a, is like Photoshop Lite, kind of. It's an older program that was in CS6. You can see that my image is 2,500 by 1,400. Not a bad size, so it's a pretty big image, right? Um, it's 23%. If I go to 100%, you can see the size of my image. Pretty pretty clear here. But once I start going beyond 100%, let's go to like 400%. See this? Right, that's a picture, guys. It's been turned into a JPEG, and if I go higher than that, let's go to 800%. Right, you really start seeing the pixelation on the image. Right, it doesn't look like a beach anymore at this at this resolution. Right, it looks like a bunch of blocks. Right, that's what it looks like. So, why am I showing you this? Because you're going to run into this problem. Number one, if you try and use some really cheap images, right. 
you want to use the images that suit your device. High resolution image for a high resolution device. And this is pretty good, 2500 by 1400. But one thing is, it's also JPEG format. Okay, bad. Here's a bad thing to do. Can I convert this to PNG? I could. Am I going to gain anything from it other than a transparent background? No. It's still going to be this bad. <laughs> Maybe worse. Because I'm converting, I'm using another algorithm, right? So the computer is calculating what it's going to be. It's going to approximate what it's going to be like in the next format, right? JPEG actually is a higher resolution image than PNG. PNG is actually lower resolution in some ways, right? But it provides this, you know, um, transparency, alpha transparency. This is more of a bitmap. I would call this more of a bitmap or texture. Some people call it a texture. But at the end of the day, what I want you to remember with all images, notice how the color variations here, right? Millions of colors as it moves from one image, one part of the image to the other. Each of these dots, and I'm going to move right in here. Let's let's scroll. Let's uh, uh, scroll right in. So we're going to kind of zoom in. So I'm going to zoom into this thing. So let's do it. So here's zoom. Let's try to keep zooming until there's no more zooming. Okay. So we have an image of something like 66, you know, crazy percent. Do what it is. So 6,400 uh, times. That's what it is. Right. And if I want to look at an image, if I want to try and start erasing an image, you can see that the pixels are this big. Size is one, right? Let's just erase the pixel. That's a pixel. Notice the difference between one pixel and the other, right? Can you tell the difference in color? They almost look the same at this point, right here. The, the pixels, okay? This checker pattern in the background for people who've never done graphics, this checker pattern here that's the transparency. And there's different ways you can display the checker pattern. You don't have to use a checker pattern, you can use white, black you know, lime green, whatever you want as your as your alpha transparency color, the default colors. But notice where this is. This is way down here in the image. And if I zoom back out, let's go back to 100%. Let's see if you can spot these four pixels that I erased, okay? Where are they? They're down here somewhere, right? Wait, maybe they're up here somewhere. Can you see them? Come on. Where, where? Yeah, right? So it's not that difficult to see, but I mean, they're wait, right here. What did you say right here? On the right, on the bottom left, here, right here. Is that where they are? Let's take a look and see if we're right. So let's say go in here and see. Yeah. Four pixels, right? There's not even that many. Four pixels, we can see them, right? And that means that if you can see those four pixels, you can see really bad variations and images right let's undo those changes you can see it take the picture what if, what if it's one pixel you've got a screen you buy a brand new laptop right bad brand new mac i gotta say mac is our ios course right brand new mac and there's a pixel that burn on the mac you see it? that's bad you gotta take that mac back if you have a mac, one pixel burn on your screen you gotta take it back that's like a defective mac right they do quality control for that. Now, let's see if you can see this one. This is at 1,000%. Let's go back to 100%. And let's see if you can see that same image again. See, see if you can see the pixel. You see it? One pixel. Is it here? Right? One pixel. You can see the problem, right? So if you can see one pixel problem, if you know where to look, if you know there's a problem, if you didn't know there's a problem, you probably wouldn't see it. Okay? So picture formats are important, right? Now we, we have this picture format that's, that is JPEG. I want to convert it so it's compatible just for our purposes. Let's save as. I notice that I have some formats. I can go, I can say it's JPEG. I can go to uh, GIF, even worse. Worst compression. GIF image is the worst. Uh, some people pronounce it GIF. I don't like that. Um, there's PSD, which is Photoshop style. TIFF. This is almost raw. This is close to raw. TIFF images are the ones. If I was going to pass you images so you can do some Photoshop on, they're the biggest images, all right? Biggest that I can pass would be a TIFF image. But you can also get raw images from your camera. And that, that we don't have that here. That's like a bitmap. Okay, so notice that that's, there's also WBMP. That's a bitmap bit uh, style. And there's others. Okay, but these are the ones that this supports. 
BMP. So let's save it as a PNG. Now there's different kinds of PNG. There's a regular PNG that says flattened. Do I want a flattened PNG? No. That means there's no alpha transparency, which is what the hell am I doing that for, right? I want a fireworks PNG or a Photoshop PNG, this one. And I don't want to add, um, I can append the name. So if I want to, I can go, hey, put an F FW in there for fireworks. They used to do that back in the day. Okay, so let's put this on the desktop and save it. Notice we're saving it and it's working. Okay, it's working, save. And I can do a preview. I can do a, a what should I call it? a two up preview where I can have different documents with different kinds of quality, right? Here's the PNG, right? This is the original. And I can change this to a JPEG. And if I zoom out, let's just go to, I don't know, uh, 25%. Can you see the difference? Here's the quality, right? How about four up? Let's go to four up. So the thing is, you can change the quality of all, all of these images so you can compare one image to the other. And you're going to notice, if you want to, when you change some of these options, right? So I want to I want to change the image of this one to something else. I can do that in this little program. And by the way, they all all these programs do this stuff where you can kind of do some different images, a different, a different way of looking at them, right, to get different quality. Now, in this particular case, these three are the same, and this one is the original. Okay. For now, let's leave it alone. But if you notice that, if I click anywhere in the image, right? And actually, let's go back to two up for a second so you can see the difference. So this is the JPEG and this is the PNG. And if I kind of zoom in, okay, just to see that image, do you see any difference? Take a look at this, the same image, both sides. Here's this part and here's this part. Look at this in here. There's variations in the color. So the pixels are actually different because of the different compression type that they're using between images, okay? You need to know this stuff a little bit. You don't have to know a lot. I don't expect you guys to be uh, graphics people or anything, but if you don't know this, then you're gonna go and download an image for the web and it's gonna be crappy. Okay, another big mistake uh, beginners make is they wanna fit the beach, right? The whole beach this way. So what do they do? Stretch. Looks terrible, right? Why? Because the beach isn't that way. It's this way. It's the, it's wide instead of things. So let's go back to original. So this is what the beach looks like if I zoom back out. There's the beach. So I don't want to make it look this way. I want it to stretch the other way because my, my image is thing. So I, what do I do? I do one of these, right? I kind of crush the beach, right? And I want to make it longer, so I kind of make it like this. Does that look right to you? This is called skewing the image, right? No matter what you do in your whole career, okay, in web, in games, whatever, never, ever skew an image. If they ever see that, they're going to say, what a noob, right? Who the heck is this person? Where do they get taught, right? You don't want to have that happen, right? But beyond that, all joking aside, you don't don't worry about what they're going to call you. This doesn't look right, right? It doesn't look right because it's skewed. It's not the right image. It's not representational of the real world, right? It looks wrong because the trees are all stretched and the horizon doesn't look right and the beach is all squashed. Now you can't tell from this image so much, but if I got a person's face and I did this, then it would look whacked. It would like really look weird, right? So if it doesn't look good on a person, don't do it with a picture. Please don't do it, okay? Don't try and fit your image to my image view. Make your image view fit the image. That's better if you can. Or do a proportional scaling. Okay, question. If I scale it, what am I really doing? What am I doing if I scale this image? When I scale it, right now I'm looking at it, I've got a preview of 25%. What if I want to save it as 25%? What am I, what am I going to do? How do I get that 25%? My original image is 2,500 by 1,400, but I don't want to make it 2,500 by 1,400. I want to I want to make it half that or a quarter of that. I want to chop it down so it can fit on my iPhone. What am I doing? How do I get that? What? Yeah, yeah, but what am I doing when I resize? So yeah, we resize it in the, the tool, but now you're a programmer. Think about programming. How do I resize this bloody thing? 
I reduce the number of pixels. If I reduce the number of pixels, what's going to happen? I'm going to lose color, right? Because I'm going to say, okay, these two pixels, it's green and red. Which one do I pick? It's going to pick the closest one in the middle. And that's going to keep doing that, keep doing that, and keep doing that until you can't see the image anymore, right? Here's an example. Let's say I've got this image, right? And I'm going to go and let's really scale this thing down. So I'm going to edit. And I'm going to scale this thing, right? So it's, I'm going to transform this thing numerically, right? So what I can do is I can go to uh, transform, and I can go to numeric transform, right? And I want to change the image. Notice that it says scale. You can also resize and rotate and so on. So I want to scale this image. It's 2,500 by 1,400. I want to go down to 25%. Here we go, 25%. And bam, 25%, right? Let's zoom in now and see what we see, right? So I'm going to kind of do a, a command option T to kind of make this thing the same size. And then we'll zoom it in. This is the new image, right? See a problem? It's, look, it's like a quarter of the size, right? And if I really go closer, I don't have to even go that close anymore. And I can start seeing pixelation here. Look, along the, the curve, especially along rounded things, even on the horizon. Even along the trees. I didn't go that deep anymore. If I go really close, wow, what a difference. Look at the difference here. Remember that image we got before? That's like way worse now than before, right? Okay. So I've got this image now, and I want to cut this image by 25 to 25%, right? Just to say. I mean, guys, I know you know this for the most part, but I don't think you think about this too much because it's not your thing to think about. I want you to think about images for a second. Because you know what? What do they say? Uh, a picture is a thousand words, right? So you look at a picture; it's really crappy. It's gonna take. It's gonna. There's gonna be a thousand things people are gonna say about your picture. It sucks. It's terrible. Who is this person? Where do they get them? How do they make this this thing on the? How do they put this thing on the phone? Let's do it. So we're gonna go back down to here. We're right click. I'm going to transform. I'm going to numeric transform, and I'm gonna do it again. Okay, I'm gonna kind of squash this in. There's the image. And let's bring it up even closer. Now, look, even making it just the size of my screen, this is only 157 pixels by 88. Now I'm at 400%. Okay? You can already see pixelation over here. The clouds are pixelated. Everything else. Okay, here we go. Take a look. You can see it's way pixelated in here. I mean, I'm really down to the pixels right now. I'm at 1,600%. And if I go closer and closer, you can see that each pixel is individual colors. There's, there's no gradation like we saw before remember how we saw it in the in the uh in the sky well get well guess what if i go to the sky you can see these bands this banding happening right banding is a problem and the reason why it's banding is because the computer is trying to compute the closest color between colors trying to compute 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 and it's not doing a great job in fact it can't do a great job it doesn't have enough information now I haven't saved this image. And the great thing about Adobe and other graphic user, you know, graphic uh, interfaces is it remembers. I can undo. How do I undo? Think about this very, very carefully in your mind. When you use Photoshop or Adobe or some, any, any other program you want, paint, how does it undo? What is it really doing? Come on, you're programmers. Can I really undo? Can I find out what the original color is by scaling up? How does it know? What the hell? How do I know what the original color was? There's no way of integrating back up, right? So the only way we undo is I keep all of those images in memory, every one of them, every step of the undo somewhere, right? Whether it's on the disk or somewhere, I'm keeping my undo steps in memory. That's why I undo, okay? Just keep that in mind. So if I undo, if I go control Z, control Z, control Z, I keep controlling Z, and I go back to my original image, you can see now, you know, I'm back to my better image, 2,500 by 1,400. But as soon as I save that puppy, right, as soon as it gets saved on my disk, and if I have a reduced image, it's always going to be that way. There's nothing you can do to improve it because there is no more undoing, right? All right, so I got my PNG image. That's fine. I played around a little bit with it. Let's bring it into iOS. So I'm just going to kind of uh, go swap to iOS for a second. If I can do this properly. It's big too because I'm doing everything at once. That's why there's a delay. Okay, I wouldn't even do. Let me do it. Okay. Um, let us 
kind of minimize this thing. And I want to drop it into XC assets. So this is where I normally take it. This is my asset catalog, like I normally do. I want to take my beach. There's my JPEG. And here's my PNG, right? I want to, I want to prefer, I prefer PNG images. I'm going to drag and drop them into my assets. So I'm going to kind of bring it in here, right? And when I drop it in, it says, hey, I want to either create a group or whatever. First of all, question, can I do this? Can I just drag and drop an image into my scene? Is that okay? Do you guys remember? If I say, okay, create groups and finish, it's going to, oh, man, what the hell? Where's my beach scene? I want it to be here, right? And I've got my beach ping here. I see my whole preview. I don't want that. That was wrong. I didn't want that at all. Let's move to trash. Oh, no, remove my reference. That's better. Okay, there's my beast. So notice that it's on 1x. There's 2x and 3x. How do I tell iOS? Should this really be 1x, by the way? 2,500 by, what is it? 2,500 by 1,400. Should that be 1x? Maybe 2x? Yeah. And if I was going to make, I want to make a 1x. How do I do that? I divide by 2. <laughs> That's how I do it. I take this image and chop it in half. Now, can I go up to make it like 20, 5,000 by 2,800? I could. I could do it. But it doesn't mean it's going to be any better because it's not real. It's not real. So going on that, when you search for images and stock images like this, notice that there is the image size here, 2,500 by 1,400. Your photographer, if you hire a photographer to do your photography for you, for websites, for iOS, for Android, whatever, make sure they take the highest quality images possible, like this one. This is 5,000, 4,500 by 3427. That would be your 3x, right? Then you can divide it by 2, right? That would be your 2x. Then you divide it by 2 again, that's your 1x, right? And then if you do that, you have a pretty good estimation. Now, that's not including cropping. You can still crop the image so it fits. I kind of need this whole image, right? Like this big image here is too wide for my average phone. Maybe I only want it this way, right? So I only want a piece of the beach, just this part, right? I don't want the whole beach. So I can crop it. I can use a crop tool. Let's say I only want this part, right? I want to crop it like this. So I want to make it like the same proportions of as an iPhone. I'm just, by the way, I'm just eyeballing it. You'd have to get the exact proportions you want. And now I got this part. Now this is more something that I can scale for an iPhone with a, you know, as an example, a portrait orientation, right? Not a landscape. This is normally a landscape orientation. But let's say you don't have the option. Your client wants the images that he that, that you put on the the app or the website or whatever be like this they have to be well i've just pulled it in here's my image and it's called beach right and if i go back to my main storyboard and we know how to do this right i want to put this image view so it it puts the beach on right so here's my image click on beach and is that right is this right is it is this exactly the right proportions or is it skewed, right? What I remember I, what I talked about, if I do one of these, if I take my image and do one of these, is this okay? Why is this happening? Because of this, scale to fill, right? Please be careful about this because it looks like it was okay. It wasn't okay, right? Because this content mode is very, um, very important. If I go aspect fit, that's right, right? Now it doesn't matter how big my image is. I can make this my image view any size I want this way or even this way, right? And it's going to con continue to uh, put my image in the right position. The other one is, let's try a couple other ones, aspect fill. Okay, this is different. What's the difference between aspect fit and aspect fill? Aspect fit, right? What it does is it says, hey, I only have a container that's so big, right? So fit the entire image in there. But this, what it's doing is, hey, I want the whole original image, and I want it to fill inside the image view, the container that is my image view, right? That's a different scenario, okay? So aspect fill actually has the image, and I can actually move part of what, whatever I see in the image. I can move it around if I want to see different parts of it. Okay, so that's aspect fill. If I go to uh, center... 
Is something wrong there? Is this right? Is this is the aspect ratio correct? Well, yeah. But what it's doing is it's taking the exact center of the image and expanding it to fill my entire screen. Okay? That's different. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to top. I want to look at the top of the image. Bottom. I want to look at the very bottom of the image. Right? Left. The left side of the image. And so on. You get the picture. Top left, top right. Most of the time, well, you want to use one of these three. Scale to fill, aspect fit, or aspect fill. If I go scale to fill, right, that means I'm going to be skewed unless I get the right aspect ratio, right? So, for example, if I know that the my image is 499 by 291, that may not be right, right? I can still use an image view with aspect uh, fit, but... I need to know the ratio. And my ratio right now is 20, uh, 2,500 by 1,400, right? So if you divide it by 10, 250 by 140 works okay because that's the same aspect ratio. I'm dividing both the width and the height by 10, exactly the same amount, right? So notice 2,500 by, by, uh, by 140. So 250 by 140. So if I go width is 250, height. That's pretty small. It's 140, right? And you can see that, right? I've changed my image size. Let me bring this whole thing inside here because it's off screen. If I can actually get it. Here we go. This is the exact image. This is what it would look like, right? Because why? I've got the correct aspect ratio, right? Even though the image is very small, more like a thumbnail, right? It's not. It's still the right aspect ratio. And if I multiply it by some other number, let's say, for example, I want to add 50% to this on both width and height, I can say that I want to add 125, which is another 50%. So this would be 375. And then another 70, which would be 210, right? You can see again that if I bring the image back into, into the view of the screen, it is the correct aspect ratio. It's not wrong. This is correct. So there's two ways you can do it. I can modify my container to fit my image. Or I can use the other one. If I go back to here, and I can say instead of scale to fill, I can scale to fit or aspect fill, aspect fit. Right? And then actually I did the other way around. Aspect fill is this one. Right. Now you can't see the difference because I've what have I done? I've scaled it properly. Right. But if I start playing around, so if I start one doing one of these, and if I go to aspect fit, right, you can see that it's going to change the image. Okay, questions around images. I know you probably know this already, right? But I got to cover it because some of you have problems with your images. Okay, I'm not going to say who, okay? But people have handed stuff in to me, and I'm like, holy crap. Have I not told them? I, maybe I was. it's my fault because I haven't told you how to manipulate images properly. At least like image manipulation 101. This is what this is, okay? Like high level. So I can't assume that you know it, so I'm just telling you. Okay, so why did I go into such a deep dive into this thing? Because in the code, if you look what it says, it says to do, you can actually do this stuff. You can actually use the code to do the same uh, functionality, scale to fill, scale to fit, right? And so on, right? So anything we can do with code, we can do this. Here's an example of the planet Mars. Okay, so we got a planet Mars. Um, and as an example, right? And we're gonna use this thing. So I'm gonna say, hey, let my image view, that's what this is, is a UI image view. And I'm gonna say image, UI image named Mars. Okay, this is the kind of stuff if our image was inside of our um, assets, right? If, if our image is already put in our assets, we can kind of call it Mars and it'll pull up. And then we can say, well, my view, I wanna add a sub view Right, so in my regular view, the view being the container that's inside of my screen, remember that the big view, so if I look at my outliner here, one thing we're not looking at, look at, see this, here's the view, right? This is the entire view. And when I add an image, I wanna add a sub view, right? That's what that is, a sub view. The sub view is almost like it's a container that's nested inside of another container. That's what it is. So here's my outside container. And then here's the beach. The beach is an image that's inside of my view. So that's a sub view. 
So here it is, self.view.add subview. And then this image view, I would never name it this again, which is Mars, right? And then what I want to do is look, I want to say that, hey, IV center, so the image view center is equal to the super view, which is the big view. And I want to look at the bounds of the super view center, right? So I can center the view. So whatever the, the I can put this in the exact center of my screen. And I can also change the frame, the bounds around the uh, around the image. So I can get this Mars image on the screen programmatically. This is the programmatical part, right? Or the code part. Okay, so that's a little bit about images I wanted you guys to know about. There's other options as well, all right? Some images are resizable, right? Now, remember what resizable means, right? When we resize an image, we're calculating, right? We don't want to resize an image. We want to swap that image out. That's the better way of doing it. I have an image set, and I want to look at the image set that is because the way, the way I have a resizable image is I have more than one image inside the set. I have a 1x, I have a 2x, I have a 3x. And what I want to do is that is right there as is a resizable image, right? Because I have different images, right? And what I want to do is I want to be able to swap out these images, right? Uh, and resize them. Now, there's different ways of resizing them. One of the way is tiling it. So I have one image and then I tile it so there's two. Just, just basic understandings, okay? If I stretch the image, it's like another way of tiling it, right? I'm stretching the interior so that I don't just stretch it the way you think, where I make an oval, right? But I actually tile it like this. It's a different thinking than if I stretch the image, which is something that looks like this. That's another way of stretching the image, right? That's where you're resizing mode. And what you can do is you can change the height and the width um, of the object in order for you to get this effect. And notice what they're doing is they're saying that the height and width is your, um, you're changing the height and width so it's dividing by four and you're doing it again. There's four different cap sets, right? Cap insets. The top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And that's what you're doing here when you set up the width of this image and you're setting it to stretch. So you're making a stretch this way. Okay. Again, this, this code is inside of your PowerPoint. I'm not going to go over everything, everything with you, but you can see that all I'm doing is I'm manipulating the image with code, right? Which is a different thing that we didn't from last, last semester. We didn't do that at all. Okay. There was no manipulation. Okay. It's eight o'clock. I've taken, I've talked a hell of a lot of time about images. And just a review, we talked about the difference between JPEGs, different kinds of compressions, a very high level, the types of what pixels are. They're just colors and position. Okay. If I know what a pixel is, if it's color and position, and if I can manipulate it, I can make whatever image I want. I also want to leave you with one thought before we take a break, right? If you think about it, if pixels are just color and position, then at the end of the day, a pixel has different attributes. Color, and for now, for you, only position in a 2D context. In a 3D context, you have other things, right? Depth might be the other one, right? Some kind of depth. We don't have that. Color, position, depth. You could have other, other things you want to know about that, that particular pixel. But at the end of the day, each pixel is just data. Just data. It's a number color value from zero to 25 million or whatever the hell it is, right? Or 65 million, right? One of those colors, it's that number that's inside, that's sitting inside that spot, a position and some kind of color value, right? That's what a pixel is. So if that's true, think about what you can do, right? We have some kind of data that's inside of this bitmap. What's a bitmap? A bunch of bits of data sitting in front of us in a x and y pattern in a grid that's what it is you can't see the grid but there's rows and columns and this is where all these pixels sit together the pixels are so close together and so small you can't see them most of the time until you start erasing them like we did right we start erasing the pixels you can see pixels hey what's going on there right 
And if you think about that, that is the basis of how we can fool your eye, right? To make any kind of special effect in movies, in video games, in applications, and whatever you want to do. If I want to make lightning come out of my hand, right? I take a video of myself, make lightning come out of my hand. What am I going to do? I'm going to color all the pixels so they look like lightning. That's what's going to happen. Hopefully the Photoshop or whatever can help me, right? Because if I was going to do each pixel, I would go crazy, right? But that's what happens really at the end of the day. You have a bunch of images. A movie is nothing but a bunch of moving images. Movie. Moving images. That's what it is, right? And I've got a bunch of these cells. And all I'm doing is every frame of the movie, right? I'm changing the pixel colors. Digital movies now. Every pixel is changing, right? Every frame. How many frames do we have in movies? Typically, 24, right? And it's fast enough to fool our eye because human persistence of vision we can't tell the difference between you know when things change now usually they're moving towards 30 and 60 frames per second for movies too because they're becoming crisper because we're, we're displaying them on 4k screens and 5k screens so the more resolution the more frame the higher the frame rate the more it fools our eyes and so that they're if you see special effects they look a little crisper right but at the end of the day all we're doing with special effects video games applications is we're fooling around with pixels colors and position and it's just data and if it's just data what do i have an array and if it's just an array i have this texture map that's what i have a texture map that's what we call it right or this texture it's the reason why we call it a texture is because you can take this data and use it for lots of stuff and a good example of that is if i had numbers between absolute zero so black all the way to absolute white i have all these variants of gray right i have 255 colors okay i want to get a random number i take a random number between zero and 255 what do i get back color i get a color back some kind of gray image okay now i take that grayscale color and i flip it into the red channel the green channel or the blue channel what happens I get a variation in green, red, and blue. It's just data. It's just data, okay? And if that's true, instead of using an if statement, think about this. Instead of using an if statement and branching a branching algorithm, I can look at a texture, a 1D texture from 0 to 255, and I can say that if the color value, right, depending on what the color value is, I'm going to do something, right? If the color value is 23, I'm going to do something else. The color value is 56. I'm going to do something else. I can use the, the data that's inside of my bitmap to make decisions. And now we get to the point where we're saying computer vision. I can look at your face and I can say, okay, look, here's all the pixels in your face. Who is this person? It's just data. If I identify the pixels in your face and I have a data map, I have computer vision, right? That's how crazy this can get, right? Computer graphics is a huge field, very interesting field, very complex field, right? But it all comes down to the stuff we're doing here and with our iPhone, right? Our iPhone is a device that can display computer graphics, but all it's doing is displaying pixels. Let's leave you with that, all right? We'll come back and I'll give you your assignment. Let's take 15 to 20. <laughs> 